It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up. Live from the greatest city in the world, this is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, as always, Ryan Payne, president of Pain Capital Management, along with the man with the plan, my father, chief investment officer, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this last weekend of 2017? Well, Ryan, I'm seeing 2017 out with a big smile on my face. It was a fabulous year, and I have an inkling that 2018 is going to be even better. Always the consummate optimist, Bob. That's why I roll with you. <laughs> Besides the fact you're my father. I appreciate that, son. You know, it's been sticking with me for 40 years. I, I hope you'll continue. <laughs> Almost 40 years. Not quite Always. yet. Always. All right. Okay. I'll get a little ahead of myself. Get a little birthday coming up. Very soon. Very soon. Yes, sir. Um, so, Bob, have you seen the new Star Wars yet, The Last Jedi? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, the, the day after Christmas, we all packed up and went over to the iMac and, and took it in. That's right. The uh, the classic uh, after holiday uh, thing to do. Well, yes. this time around, it took in a, the first weekend, it took in a staggering over $100 million, which is wow. unbelievable. It's the second largest opening of all time after the last Star Wars movie, which came out two years ago. Which is kind of crazy when you compare it to the original Star Wars, which opened in May 25th of 1977. At that time, it only opened in about 32 theaters. And the amazing thing is, what do you think the tickets cost for a show to see Star Wars back in 1977? Back in 1977? Um, how about a dollar? A dollar. Actually, the matinee was a dollar fifty and oh. three fifty for a primetime showing of the, of the actual movie. Also crazy to think, you know what the budget was for the newest Star Wars? The newest Star Wars, uh, I'm not going to say a billion dollars. Close. They say upwards of over $800 million, so it could be close to a billion. Do you want to wow. guess what the budget was for the first Star Wars back in 1977? I'll say uh, 500000 500000 a little low, $11 million, which is probably a mm. fairly decent budget back then. So <laughs> the times have changed, Bob. Well, you know, it just goes to show you, right what marketing can do. That's true. Marketing can do an inflation because <laughs> I don't yes. think I've gone to the movies in a long time and paid less than uh, $15 per ticket. So, But anyway, I digress. Well, one thing about Star Wars, right? It's actually older than you are. By one year. <laughs> one year, yes. <laughs> well, we have a terrific show, end of year show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about your New Year's financial checklist with 2017 coming to a close, have you been procrastinating on addressing your financial issues? We know you have. Bob and I are going to give you a nudge to get started with putting together a financial game plan for 2018. We're going to talk about hidden gems. Do you have assets out there that you've forgotten about? When was the last time you did a full accounting of all your assets? Bob and I are going to discuss the benefits of updating your total financial picture along with this week's financial pornography, a lot of crazy news out there we want to address. And our spotlight segment today, we have Jennifer Financial Angel, one of our star financial advisors on the show, talking about a case that she worked on recently so you don't make the same mistakes with your own retirement planning and investing. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about your financial checklist for 2018. Bob, what are some of the more important things that you need to be on our New Year's checklist? You know, Rod, the number one thing is to recognize that we have been in a big, booming bull market for the last eight years. And that, you know, the trends don't continue just because you want them to. So you need to rebalance. I mean, rebalancing your overall portfolio back to your original risk tolerance and your investment objectives. You know, the one thing I learned about our industry is that when people set risk tolerance, it's based on a questionnaire, maybe five or six questions. Right. And basically, people answer those questions based on their most recent experience. So you think most people would answer those questions that are very fearful or very greedy right now? I think most people, I think you would probably be more inclined to be more aggressive. Yeah, I think you would uh, You know, want to be more conservative, but you keep looking at the market going up thinking, oh, I have to own, I don't want to get out because I'm going to miss out. 
you know, I'm going to miss out on those returns. But you miss out on a lot if you're not invested. So rebalancing, really the best thing to do. But those two emotions, fear and greed, come into play. Yeah, and I think right now it's more important than ever to rebalance because, to your point, we've been in a bull market specifically in large-cap U.S. stocks. And we look Mm -hmm. at, what, about 50 portfolios a month. And I'm pretty confident if I was to look at your portfolio right now, you're overweighted in that same concentrated area. And if we get a market correction, well, you're going to be out of luck. And the problem is we can't predict the future. So it's so important while the wind's at your back, things are doing well, Bob, that you do actively take profits and add money to other places that aren't just the U.S. stock market. Absolutely right. You can do that by either selling some of those uh, parts of your portfolios that are up the most and buying what's down, or you simply set it up so that you automatically have your contributions, your 401k contributions, or your cash flow reinvested into the areas of the market that are undervalued. Now, what other things can we do, Rod? Besides rebalancing your portfolio, what's another must do You know, as we enter the new year? Yeah, since we're the beginning of the year right now, the thing I try not to think about, but I know it's important, is working on your budget slash savings. I'm doing it this week, and it's not going to be pretty, but I want to go through last year's credit card. You know, I built an online portal like we do for our clients, and I'm actually going to look at because it breaks out what I spent money on. I know that's not fun. But it's a great way to figure out where can you trim the fat and where Mm -hmm. can you add your savings for 2018. And I think starting with that budget is probably the best place to start. And with the way technology is now, with the way the credit cards are, they they give you a list of all these things. And through our portal, it can give you a full breakdown of where you spent your money. Now, your mom and I go through that same process. And and it is. It's difficult to look at a budget and cut things out. But I don't know how this works, son. But every time I want to cut something out, if it's mom's part of the budget, it doesn't get cut. But it's my part of the budget, there's no problem in eliminating that issue. (laughs) Maybe that's why we've been married for over 40 years. (laughs) (laughs) It's a tough conversation to have. Um, If you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to get serious about my portfolio, my financial plan in 2018. I want to put together a budget. I want to do a full tally up of all my assets. I want to get serious about rebalancing to an allocation that's driven by my goals. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost to get you ready for 2018. In this review, we'll look at everything. We'll build your personalized portal. We'll look at all of your assets, liabilities. We're going to look at what are you spending right now? Where can you trim the fat? Where can you save money this year? Should you be maxing out your 401ks, your IRAs for 2018? And we're going to do a full analysis of your portfolio with Bob and I's famous portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at all those different accounts, your 401ks, your insurance accounts, your annuities, everything on a simple three-page document. We're going to look at income. Income so critical in retirement. Can we help you increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? Bob and I are going to point out all the hidden costs on your portfolio that those mutual funds charge you, that those annuities are charging you to help you reduce the cost on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your money overweighted in large cap US stocks? Are you in big trouble if the market corrects? Are you protected? We're going to point out all the pitfalls in your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together, model it out for you to make sure your money will outlive you, not you outliving your money. Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for literally over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC, or you can text us or call 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, there's no cost. There's no obligation. Just give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. Just text or call 844-752-6692. This is Bob. This is Rye. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. 
That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages in how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. You'll have the freedom to select top investment strategies, not just one particular product. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call today for a complimentary review. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Hey, it's Ryan Payne here with the weekly market update sponsored by Payne Capital Management. It was a fantastic year for the U.S. stock market with record highs on the Dow, S&P, and the NASDAQ, completely bucking Wall Street's analysts' average 27 prediction of a modest single-digit returns. The Dow shot up to over 25% this year. The S&P 500 surged over 20%, and the tech-heavy NASDAQ outshined them all with around a 30% gain for the year. Fueled by the now famous or infamous Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google trade, with continued economic expansion in the U.S., along with synchronized global growth around the world, the bull market was alive and well in 2017. In reflection, it was a great year all around. I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with my father and my brother and the entire Payne Capital Management team week in and week out. I'm also appreciative of all of our clients that are a part of the Payne Capital Management family and has been a privilege and a pleasure to serve you and your families, many of you for decades now. And thank all of you for tuning in every week to hear Bob and I chat about financial planning and investing. So wishing everyone a safe, a warm, and very happy New Year's. We told you earlier that Bob Payne is Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This means he oversees all the portfolio designs and financial planning strategies for the firm. For 40 years, he's worked to change the way the financial industry approaches financial planning. He turned away from the traditional Wall Street sales pitch and pioneered a new approach to retirement planning using goal-oriented, customizable plans that better fit your individual needs. Reach out to Bob and the team for a complimentary review by calling 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's main goals at Payne Capital is to educate you. We just want to give you common sense advice that you can use to make the best decisions about your retirement and your portfolio. And that's why we put together seven smart tips for the savvy investor, just seven common sense tips you can use on your portfolio to enhance performance, reduce taxes. Simply text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555 888-888. 888. You can get our seven smart tips for the savvy investor, just some common sense things that you can utilize on your portfolio. And in this segment, what we'd like to talk about are hidden gems. If you're like most people, you probably have some financial accounts that you haven't paid much attention to for a long, long time. Those statements might even be collecting dust in your file cabinet, but some of these hidden gems could be put to much better use. Bob, let's talk about some of these old accounts we tend to ignore for way too long. Yeah, right. I think the biggest thing is investment accounts, especially 401k accounts. 
Let me ask you, how do you view your 401k profit sharing? Do you wait for that statement to come in every month or every quarter before you pay attention to it? Oh, no, there's another way I, to do it. I eat my own cooking. I've actually built the same portal that we built for our clients for myself, which is an awesome way to view everything in one place. So I get a tally up of all my assets, liabilities on a daily basis. Well, you know, most people don't do that. What most people do is rely on that paper statement. And of course, it comes in with all the bills and all the uh, marketing materials that you don't want to look at. And a lot of times it just gets tossed in the trash. So I think the first thing that people should do is start to view their 401k in real time. Once they do that, then you got to really pay attention because there's a lot of shortfalls in investing when you use the 401k at the place you used to work. What are some of of those problems, Roy? One of the problems is when you look at your old 401k plans is, number one, you don't know how you're invested in those different plans because you haven't paid Mm -hmm. attention to it. A lot of the administrative costs, the burdens on you, your companies actually aren't paying those. They're hidden in the actual 401ks that you own. So you're probably paying a lot more than you want to be paying, and you're probably allocated with a lot more limited allocation than you should be. And that's one of the real values of looking at everything in a holistic picture, because you can start to see where you can cut the costs down, where you can better diversify the money. Because again, one of the biggest issues, and we talked about this earlier in the show already, Bob, is you're probably not diversified properly. And the only way to really find that out is to do a full holistic analysis. Yeah, so true, right? A lot of times the um, administrative fees are high because they're trying to provide things like loans to other people in the plan. And the same token, they're trying to keep the costs down you know, by limiting the menu of investments. So it's kind of like a heads you lose, tails you lose situation. And you don't have to be stuck there. You know, what can someone who has a 401k who no longer works for that company, but still working, what can they do with that money? Yeah, there's a lot of different options. And ideally, you can roll that money into another plan for yourself. Our preference would be an IRA or an individual retirement account where you have unlimited options. The more options you can give yourself, and by consolidating a lot of times, you can reduce the cost. So anything that's a dead 401k, there's a lot of options to move that money. And now, at the beginning of the year, is a good time just to, again, do that tally up and figure out where all those assets are. So true. There are other hidden gems that people have. What do you think about life insurance? Should that be something that you take a look at on an annual basis? Yeah, life insurance is a big one. I just met down with a, with a gentleman the other day, and he had three old life insurance policies that he's continued to contribute to. He's got cash value built up in these policies, and he's got a death benefit of what's called 400000 And we did the math on this. Had he just cashed in these policies, took all that cash value, put in a savings account for himself, instead of putting those that savings into those insurance premiums, he just saved the money in his personal savings account, he'd have more money than the death benefit before he was age 75, and that was hmm. only 15 years away. So I think it's really critical look at those old insurance policies. It might be worth getting out of them. The insurance costs can be very expensive over time. You might be better off just investing the money, Bob. Well, the problem is with insurance, it really is an investment, right? People, you know, unfortunately, insurance is something that's sold. It's not something you buy, right? Somebody sold you a policy and we tend to take those policies and forget about them thinking that it only matters, you know, and when we pass away or, you know, whatever the insurance was intended for, but it's an investment. And they invest in stocks and bonds just like you do, only you pay a big middleman, you know, for those investments. That's called the insurance company. So I think that's an excellent idea, Rise, to get an enforced illustration, find out what rate of return you're getting on that investment and compare it to what are the other options that are out there. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That enforced illustration is something you can have run directly from the insurance company, not from the insurance salesman, to determine how that policy is gonna do over time. And then we can determine get rid of the policy or keep it. Which also I think about too, Bob, is with all the market corrections we've had in the last 15 years, how much money do we have just sitting in all these savings accounts, money markets that we forget about, and they're earning virtually nothing? Yeah, it's so true, right? You know, back in the day when you were growing up, you had a little piggy bank where you would put money in there and you wouldn't think much about it. But, you know, over time, you start to accumulate a lot of money. And the same thing happens with small accounts, checking accounts, uh, savings accounts, money market accounts. Over time, it adds up. And if you're not compounding that money, you're losing because of inflation and perhaps of taxation. So it's so critical 
you know, to put it all together into one cohesive view. You know, Rye, the big thing that happened with the uh, Federal Reserve cutting interest rates and all the money center banks around the world cutting interest rates over the last eight years, like you, they invested in CDs and their whole investment strategy was to roll that CD over every six months to two years. Well, when rates went virtually to zero, most of that money went into cash. And all they had to do was invest a couple of years out in the bond market to make a positive return. So there's trillions of dollars now sitting in cash that used to be rolled over in CDs. Yeah. And I think that's the thing you want to look at, when we, especially when we run analysis, is how much income is my portfolio producing? And when you factor in all that cash earning nothing, that's a big problem versus the cost of living long term. So it's, it's really critical that you get that money working for you. And again, doing that tally up of all your assets, just an awesome 2018 first of the year thing to do. The other thing I think about too, Bob, are, are old pensions. A lot mm-hmm. of times you're entitled to a pension in retirement. And a lot of times, like one of my clients recently found out he could take his pension early at age 58. He was going to get a lower benefit, but it was still better to take it now than waiting till he's 65. It was a good thing we looked at that pension even before he's retired. Yeah, it's always good to check in with a company that you work for to make sure that you're entitled to that pension and they have your contact information. And <laughs> recently checked on mine and they didn't have the right address, the right phone number, or the right email address. Yeah, very critical things to do, Bob. So I feel like this is the time to get things tallied up, get those hidden gems together, and really figure out what the heck's going on with your portfolio. Yeah, let's make it a great 2018 by being financially organized. And let me ask you, right? In general, uh, most people you meet, how organized are they financially? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you say? I think we're all honest about it. We're probably, on average, about a 4. If I were to ask you, how organized would you like to be? Where would you like to rank? What would you say? Don't we all want to be a 10, Bob? Absolutely. And if you want to be a 10, all you need to do is be one of the next few callers. See, if you've saved over $200,000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. Now, what's this mean? This means is we're going to simplify your life. Think about all those account numbers, all those different portfolios, all those passwords, security questions for every bank account, every brokerage account, every account, every insurance policy, every credit card, every account where you have a statement and you have online access, it can be simplified and organized into one 360 financial portal. Wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? If something happened to you, think about how simple it would be for your children or for your spouse, you know, to keep your life working or transition your financial affairs in a worst case scenario. See, we're able to tie your whole financial life together into one 360 financial portal. This will give you a window into your financial future. Your wealth projections, your goals will be updated on a daily basis both for now and in real time, anytime you want to drop in. Lastly, we're going to put together an investment analysis, which will look at all of your portfolios. We're going to make sure that you have the three key ingredients to a successful portfolio, diversification, cost, and income. You no longer want to be overcharged by your investments. You want to have a portfolio that gives you the return for the risk you're taking. And finally, we're going to tie this all together into one customized 360 financial portal which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family and I have been perfecting now for over four decades. That's correct, folks. For over 40 years, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call us now at 844-PLAN. NYC, that's call or text 844-752-6692. Get the full review if you have over $200,000 saved for retirement at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text 844-752-6692. We have a limited availability. Get a holistic review for 2018 at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text. 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio.
At Payne Capital Management, we understand how crucial Social Security is to your retirement. However, Social Security is confusing, and there are many ways to claim your benefits. That's why we've developed 10 strategies for maximizing your Social Security benefits. If you text the word BULLISH to 555-888, we'll send you a link to download your free copy. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888 and you'll receive a link to register. The social security system is complex. Make sure you're making the most of your benefits. Get started today by texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Text the word BULLISH to 555-888. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what uh, is happening out there in the world of financial pornography? Big news, right? Big news. Big news. Yes. Yes, we've created the Financial Pornography Hall of Fame. Wow, it's official. Well, that is a huge step in the No Pain, No Gain radio show evolution. Well, hands down, Rye, the Royal Bank of Scotland won. When two years ago, they came out and simply said, sell everything coming into 2016. Maybe because the market went down that year in 2015, they decided that uh, all their clients should go to cash. That's amazing. And I remember that. I mean, that's exactly two years ago. It was December of 2015. And I have to think, Bob, if the Dow now is at about 25,000, where was the Dow when they told all their clients blindly to sell out of the market? Barely above 17,000 on the Dow. Wow. So about, that's... Yeah. I missed about a 30% return. <laughs> oh my God. Talk about... Uh, really uh, shooting themselves in the foot in terms of advice. Well, you know, that's what comes to mind. It just goes to show you that predicting what's unpredictable, you know, trying to, you know, know what's unknowable, it's not in the grasp of the average normal human being. And just to go along with that, you know, I see all these different strategists, you know, falling over each other to make predictions for 2018. I mean, you can have the market down 5% next year, or you can have it up 15%. Some target 2750 in the S&P. There's a 2850 target from another big firm. 2950 from another big firm. Hey, Ry, there's another bank out there that's warning we're going to have a flash crash like we did a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think the, the moral of the story here is you don't want any sort of blanketed advice. There's no all or none when it comes to investing. It's a dangerous game to play because, hey, if you get it right, well, that's amazing. But if you get it wrong, you can miss a 30% move on the upside like this. And I think, you know, one thing you always say, Bob, is an, an old Bobism, is the nice thing about being diversified long term is you never have to be that accurate. You just have to be approximately right and you're going to make money over time. I mean, that's that's the sweet spot where we want to be. Yeah, but you know what it really shows, Ry, is this Wall Street fascination with 500 stocks. You know, they only make predictions on the S&P 500. What about the other 9,500 publicly traded companies? Don't they count? Well, that's where diversification is so key. And, you know, I'm willing to bet right now, if you're looking at your portfolio, what kind of diversification do you truly have? Do you have a lot of mutual funds that own all the same stocks, aka stocks in the S&P 500? And it's become more dangerous because as the market goes up, Bob, and we get closer to an eminent correction down the line, not being diversified is really going to be a problem. Well, that's the thing, right? You got to really focus on what's going to give you the best opportunity to achieve your goals, not based on what a bunch of strategists say, who, by the way, were wrong by 300 points last year or you know, almost 2,100 Dow points, or someone who predicted that interest rates were going to go straight up and he should sit in cash at a 0% return. You can't achieve your goals investing based on what people are predicting because it has nothing to do with planning with achieving goals with you know making money in the markets yeah well said well said it's uh, planning and diversification write it down it's 2018 get ready or almost in 2018 the other article i found this past week was actually on cnbc.com and the article basically talked about how there's been a surge 
and investor cash to stocks, which triggering a fear that the rally might be near end because when people were plowing money to the market, that's typically not a good sign. But exchange traded funds saw one of their second biggest weeks of inflows ever with $31.4 billion going mm. into exchange traded funds. This is last week into those investment vehicles. Bob, do you want to take a wild guess where most of that money went into what type of funds? Well, that's simple, Rob. It was either one of these two. It had to be either large company growth stocks or the infamous S&P 500 index. That's right. It was into mainly S&P 500 exchange traded funds, which again, goes back to my point. You've got to be careful with what you own right now. A lot of money's going all into the same place. It's large cap US stocks. You have to spread your money out. In fact, this year, year to date, the iShares core S&P 500 fund has had been the biggest winner with over $31 billion in inflows basically outpacing every other exchange traded fund. And as the old saying goes, Bob, you don't want to follow the herd. That's never a good mentality when it comes to your investment strategy. You know, I got to give these people credit. I mean, after eight years of sitting in cash, at least they finally put some money to work in this big booming bull market. It's good, but it's not diversification. And if you're sitting there <laughs> wondering, am I properly diversified going into 2018? Where's my money really allocated? Well, here's your shot to do it. We have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan and we will do it with no obligation or cost. It'll be a full beginning of the year 2018 tally up of all your assets. We'll build you a personalized portal where we can get a holistic view of everything. And then we're going to model everything out from retirement, how long your money's going to last, and we're going to look at all of your investments. We're going to put together a simple three-page portfolio x-ray, and we're going to look at what does your diversification really look like? You have a lot of different accounts out there. How much money do you have in large cap stocks, small cap stocks? How diversified are you? What pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? Bob and I are going to point those out to you. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio. Bob and I are going to break down all the costs, including the hidden costs, to see if we can reduce the amount you're paying on your portfolio on an annual basis. And we're going to look at income. Income is critical for retirement. Is your portfolio retirement ready? We're going to look at how much income your portfolio produces and can we increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together and determine, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money utilizing strategies now our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? Hey, let's start out 2018 on the right foot by giving us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. Text or call 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few lucky callers, you've saved over 200000 for retirement. Our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost. Just give us a call. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. This is Rye. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. In New York City, turn to the team at Payne Capital Management. Call 844-PLAN-NYC to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-752-6692. Find out how to better prepare for your financial future. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, no game financial radio. 
And Bob and I are all about common sense because we're common men. (laughs) And so we want to make sure that you're getting the most common sense advice when it comes to your retirement planning, your investment decisions. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Seven Smart Tips for the Savvy Investor. Just seven things that you can do proactively on your portfolio to better your tax situation, to optimize your portfolio for returns. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. You can get our latest guide for free. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555 888-888. 888, and we'll give you some common sense things that you can do. Just seven tips for the savvy investor, seven simple things that you can do. Check it out. You can get access to the guide for free at 555 888. Text the word bullish to 555 888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can do that too. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. (laughs) Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com, and you can learn a little more about what Bob and I do here at Payne Capital Management. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us to questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will directly answer all your questions. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we always get good questions. The first one comes in, Bob, from Carla. She's in Greenwich, Connecticut. She writes in, Bob, should I try to get my house paid off before I retire or just pay it off slowly since the interest rate is very low? Well, that's a, is that a trick question, Carla? Because there's so many different answers that I could give you when it comes to paying off your mortgage you know, before retirement. It really comes down to interest rates. I mean, if you have a low rate on that mortgage, is it a fixed rate or is it a floating rate? You know, a lot of times people are able to earn more money by investing that money into a diversified portfolio. But you may want peace of mind. Some people really feel it's important to be debt-free. You may want to be debt-free in retirement. One of the things that I find, though, Carla, is that you know sometimes if the rate's low and you have a fixed rate of return and you've saved money for retirement, that uh, once you retire and you have no more earned income, you're going to find it very difficult to take out a loan that you may need for medical purposes or an emergency to help out some children. So it's a pretty complex question. And what I find is that just like any other question we get, it really depends on your personal situation. I know, Rye, I've had clients where it makes all the sense in the world to pay off their mortgage because they sleep better at night knowing they don't have any debt. On the other hand, with the you know conservative total return portfolios that um, a lot of our clients have, they've been able to earn a lot more than they're paying in debt. What would your advice be in this area? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think you have to run the numbers on it, but I'll tell you what, if you're getting close to retirement, peace of mind, in my mind, that makes sense, is always paramount. So I I think you have to determine that because a lot of times, if you run the math on it, it doesn't make a big difference one way or the other. But if your peace of mind is, I don't want debt in retirement, my advice is always pay it off. It's probably not going to make or break you. But to your point, Bob, you have to run the numbers. The next question comes in from Cliff. He's in Livingston, New Jersey. I was just there the other day. He writes in, Ryan, I told myself that once I hit a million dollars in my portfolio, that I'd move a lot of money to cash. But now that I'm at a million, I'm thinking I can get to 1.2 million before I make a move. What do you think? Bad idea, Cliff. Very bad idea. If you've listened to Bob and I for a long time, which hopefully you have, We never make decisions about our portfolio based on what the market's doing. It's always based on your goals. What do you think about that, Bob? Well, I think that uh, a lot of people like to set a specific goal about how much money they want to have in their portfolio. And and it actually works for some folks in that um, they budget, you know, their spending, you know, based on their portfolio value. In a big booming bull market like we've had, right, that works really well. But boy, what if we hit a year like 2008, 2009? You know, you need a portfolio that really delivers more dependable income, especially if you're in retirement, so that when you just set these arbitrary goals, sounds good, but, you know, we find in practice it's a road, uh, you know, paved to failure. Yeah, because again, and I think this is really, really important, if we ever get a market correction, which invariably you're going to have them down the line, no one's going to give you a warning sign ahead. It sounds like I'll ride the trend up at some point, I'll see the signs around the corner 
The truth is you never do. And the only real defense besides predicting the future, and my crystal ball broke like at least 15 years ago, (laughs) is to have a diversified portfolio. Diversification is real protection because if the market hits and well, most of your money is diversified in different things, you're going to be well protected. And that's why it's so critical right now at the beginning of 2018 to really reevaluate what your portfolio looks like. We see a lot of things coming ahead, Bob. You know, I think about inflation kicking in as the economy is getting better and better. And there's a lot of different asset classes that you want to have in your portfolio, like commodities are a tremendous inflation hedge. Things like pipelines where the income is very, very high can be a tremendous hedge against inflation. You need to think about all the things that are going to happen over the course of your lifetime and your portfolio has to account for that. You know, Ryan, a big danger I see right now is that uh, there's conventional wisdom, right? There's a you know, the markets will always do what it has to do to confound the majority opinion of the day. And the majority opinion of the day is that interest rates are going to go skyrocketing up. We're going to have, you know, hyperinflation and bonds are going to crash. So the only place I can invest my money is in the stock market. That's the only place that's safe. What do you think of that idea? Again, it's a very scary way to invest because you don't know if we're going to have a correction down the line. And the Probably at some point we will, and we don't know what's going to happen with interest rates. You know, more than likely they'll probably go up at some point, but you can't dictate your whole strategy on that. That's why, Bob. Again, I think right now, especially the beginning of the year, it's such a great time to reevaluate your holistic picture. Look at where all your money is balanced. Even you know whether it's in your four hundred one k's, your IRAs, your regular account. How does that all work together? Where's your risk? And how do you basically diversify that risk out? The problem with that thinking is if you're in bond funds, I agree with you. You know, you have unlimited downside risk. There really isn't any hedge. The only true hedge that I have discovered in my 42 years in a portfolio is to own a fixed income instrument, a bond that pays a fixed rate of return and comes due at a specific date in the future. That way, your downside risk is you get all your money back with interest. You know, that's an offer I can't refuse. How about you? Nope. It is definitely not an offer I can't refuse. You got to own your bonds outright. We don't like bond funds and you have to be diversified. Remember that. And I'd like to make an offer you can't refuse. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least $200,000 for retirement, my son and I want to start off your 2018 on the right foot. We want to help you to achieve your goals and your dreams. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to review your taxes. There's a lot of uncertainty about what you should be doing with your portfolio, what you should be doing with your taxes. Come on in. We'll give you some help. We're going to look over your estate plan. We don't want your estate to be an IOU to the IRS, not just putting the documents together. It's making sure that those things are titled properly. Your beneficiaries are titled properly. You want every I dotted, every T crossed. And lastly, let's review those investment portfolios. We've been in a big booming bull market now for eight years. Are you diversified? We're going to make sure that your portfolio is diversified across asset classes within asset classes. We're going to look at the cost of doing business. Are you overcharging yourself in your portfolio? And lastly, we're going to look at your income. We want to be certain that you have a portfolio that optimizes the income available from the marketplace. You know, income is much more dependable than capital gains, and it's the total return of your portfolio that's critical to your success, not just making money. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies that my family's been working on for over 40 years. We want to be certain that you are going to outlive your money, that your money's not going to outlive you. So don't waste time. Call us now at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text 844-752-6692. Get a holistic review to start the year at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial radio. Here's this week's spotlight on uh, no pain, no gain. It's no pain, no gain. Financial radio. 
And Bob and I like to keep it simple, maybe because we're from Philadelphia. I don't know. But we want to keep it simple for you too, just giving you practical tips that you can use for your retirement, your investing. And that's why we put together our latest guide, Seven Smart Tips for the Savvy Investor. You can get a free copy of that if you text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, spelled B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. You can get some very practical tips that you can use as an investor. We like to keep it simple for you. You can get the guide for free at 555-888. Just text that word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Again, that's the word bullish to 555 888-888. Eight eight eight, and it's time for my favorite part of the show, our spotlight segment. Each week, we dissect a real financial plan and uncover what we call the flaws or pain points. That's spelled P A Y N E for the record, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And our special guest today is our star financial advisor, Jen, financial angel. Good morning, Jen. Awesome to spend the end of the year here with you right before 2018. Mm-hmm. Doesn't get better. Good morning, guys. How are we? Terrific. Good. Good morning. Yeah. So I recently worked on a case and she is an older woman who is in her 70s. Well, not too old. She came to us and said, you know, my husband's a lot older than I am. You know, he's he's had a lot of health problems recently. So a lot of their joint assets have kind of been spent on him and his health concerns recently. She just turned 70, so she's about to take her required distribution starting next year. So she's a lot going on. And she's been mostly handling it herself at this point and was like, you know, I'm, I am taking care of my husband. I'm, you know, doing also managing my own assets and our joint assets and all these health expenses. So really, she just wanted another point of view, another eye to take a look at things and say, okay, how am I doing? Am I on the right track? And obviously, we found some flaws. You know, one of them being, you know, she was you know, running out of money in their joint assets and she has this really big sized um, retirement account mostly sitting in cash, which is crazy, right? And especially because she needs growth, she needs these assets to last her well into her 90s because the reality is she could live another 20, 25 years. Her husband probably not because he's in his late 80s, but we want to make sure that assets are going to outlast her. Yeah, looking at this, Jen, what are some of the things that you saw that uh, they were doing wrong to make sure that she achieves those goals? I like how you establish the goals first, and then it's kind of like, okay, what's the portfolio doing? What should it be doing? Yeah, I mean, one of the things we saw was she had this group of bonds that she, you know, back when she bought them, you know, five, 10 years ago, they were, you know, high quality investment grade. But the reality is she didn't have the time to keep an eye on these individual bonds Kudos to her that she had individual bonds in her portfolio, but the problem is now they are no longer investment grade. So you're taking this much higher risk because you're not, you know, watching the credit quality in some of these individual bonds that had kind of lost their investment grades. So now they're qualified as now junk or high yield bonds, however you want to call it, which is just an added risk that you don't need to take, especially on the bond side. So she's in this cash position and then she has these bonds that no one's really keeping an eye on, right? And it's why you hire someone like us who can say, okay, you know, here's make sure the credit quality is there along with the cash flow and the you know preservation of capital. But you want all those things combined, you know, doing it on your own is really impossible, especially if you don't have the know-how of, you know, looking at each one of these individual credit qualities of all these different companies, you know, who has the time to do that? <laughs> we do. <laughs> exactly. That's our job. Yeah. But, you know, she's taking care of her husband and all these nuances in her own life. You know, you should hire someone else to do do the expert work, making sure that you don't lose that the principle there when you're in these, you know, junk bonds that could you know lose their value pretty significantly in any kind of downturn. So Jen, I have a question for you. Why were they keeping so much money in cash? Was it the uh, was it an investment decision or was it out of an emotional decision? I think it was an emotional decision whereas it was mostly, you know, just hesitation and not knowing, you know, when to get in, when to get out, you know, what to sell, what to buy, you know, with this extra cash on hand. And she didn't, you know, need the cash necessarily. You know, it's in her retirement account. So she's not pulling from it yet until next year. So it was really just a very much emotional, you know, ride there where she didn't know, you know, what to buy, what to do with it. Hmm. So how much income were you able to increase the portfolio by investing that money properly? Over $23,000 in just additional income. Wow. 
which she needs. That'll pay a few bills. Yeah, exactly. You know, getting money out of cash, invested properly, you know, getting the bonds more, you know, allocated correctly where you have someone watching the credit quality, you know, making sure you're not in these junk bonds where you absolutely don't need that kind of risk when you're in your 70s, 80s. The other thing I noticed too, too, Jen, just looking at the way the money is diversified, we talk a lot about that today, is she has a lot of what we call overlap. She owns a lot of individual stocks and then she owns mutual funds and exchange traded funds that own the same stocks. So it's kind of like she's overweighting the overweight. It's like, why own Verizon stock and then own about five different mutual funds that own Verizon too? And I love that how you just holistically are able to break down everything she owns. And you can see there's this concentration of owning a lot of the same things. Yeah. I mean, you can look at any of these individual stock holdings that she has, whether it's you know, Microsoft or Apple or any of these bank stocks that have all of these overlapping that are in all these other mutual funds. So it's it's interesting to point out when people say, you know, you know, only have this much in this particular stock. Well, actually, you have much more than that because it's in this fund and three other funds that you also own. Yeah. The other thing I liked about this analysis too, Jen, is you look at in a down market back in 2008, this portfolio would have gone down over 30%. And I'm thinking, here's a woman who is getting into retirement, more dependent on her portfolio. She can't really afford to have those kind of downturns in her portfolio anymore. She doesn't need it. Doesn't need the risk. She just needs the income and the stability and the safety of the portfolio. And how important is that? If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, what risk do I have my portfolio? Again, what diversification do I really have or do I really need? We have a couple slots left. Here's your shot to get that full holistic review just like this. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself, Bob, Gen Financial Angel will run for you our total financial master plan and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a review exactly like this. What kind of income is your portfolio generating? Retirement and income are so critical. We're able to increase the income on this portfolio by $23,000 a year. How much can we increase the income on your portfolio? What about diversification? Is your money all concentrated in the same place? Do you have a lot of funds that have different names, but they all own the same stocks? We're going to point out what the downturn could look like. What happens if the market pulls back? How prepared is your portfolio? We're also going to look at fees. Is there hidden fees in your portfolio? Are you overpaying? Are you being overcharged on your investments? We're going to show you how to reduce cost. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give you a holistic view. We're going to create a personalized portal for you to look at everything, model out retirement, and determine, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money utilizing strategies now we've been working on for literally over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? Don't miss out. We have a few slots left. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement our team will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC or text us or call us at 844-752-6692. Well, what a great way to end off the year with uh, Jen, Financial Angel on the show. Jen, any big New Year's resolutions for uh, 2018 you want to share with the world? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just a flat out no? No. No, I don't. No. I'll let you know maybe next month. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Big Bob, what's on tap for the new year? Waiting for that big ball to drop in Times Square, Rise, so we can get going with 2018. Oh, man. If it didn't happen already. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.